you. Uh, so, uh, hello all. I'll uh, talk about attribute-based encryption and its uh, generalizations for non-deterministic finite automata from the learning with errors assumption. Uh, it's a joint work with Shweta Agrawal and Shota Yamada, and uh, this got initiated while, while Shota was visiting IIT Madras back uh, last year. So let's start with the notion of uh, attribute-based encryption introduced by Sahai and Waters in 2005, uh, where it's a uh, generalization of public key encryption and where the goal is really to provide an expressive access control over encrypted data. We have seen this from this morning. Uh, so the setting is like this, that uh, let's say we have a uh, server where we uh, store encrypted files. These files are encrypted with respect to public user attributes. And accordingly, there should be a key authority uh, which should be able to generate restricted secret keys. These restrictions come in terms of policies or Boolean functions uh, embedded inside the secret keys in such a way that um, these keys would be able to decrypt any of these uh, cipher texts uh, if and only if the attributes with respect to which the files were encrypted satisfy the embedded policies. Further, we want to also ensure that uh, any set of colluding users should not be able to uh, decrypt any of these files as long as at least one of these users are not individually authorized to decrypt them. So uh, this is actually formalized by the following set of uh, four algorithms, uh, setup, encrypt, keygen, and decrypt. So it takes the, sec the setup takes the security parameter and outputs a public key and a master secret key. Uh, the encryption takes the public key and an attribute X and a uh, message M to output the cipher text encoding the message with respect to the attribute X. The key generation algorithm takes the master secret key and a circuit F to output the secret key corresponding to this functionality. And the secret key, when it acts upon the cipher text to the decryption box, uh, it outputs the hidden payload M. Uh, if the attribute, if and only if the attribute satisfies the function. Uh, and security goes like this, for any tuple uh, of a challenge attribute and a pair of messages M0, M1, and all the secret keys for functionalities have seen by the adversary, uh, their cipher text, the pair of, uh, the cipher text for these pair of messages M0 and M1 with respect to the attribute X should remain computationally indistinguishable as long as these secret keys are individually unable to decrypt any of these cipher, te cipher texts. So uh, this notion of attribute-based encryption uh, has seen uh, an elegant sequence of works from uh, 2005 onward with restricted, uh, I mean, constructions for restricted circuit classes. Uh, till in 2013, uh, Gorbunov et al. first showed how to support all circuits uh, from the learning with errors assumption. Now, even if uh, learning uh, ABE for all circuits was realized and circuits are a powerful model of computation, they have their own inherent drawbacks. Namely, uh, they have, I mean, circuits always provide fixed length input support and their description changes based on input lengths. Uh, they also incur worst case runtime uh, based on all inputs of certain length. So naturally our attention turns towards uh, uniform models of computation like aut finite automata or Turing machine or RAM, where we have arbitrary length input support with a fixed description size, which also incur input specific runtimes. Moreover, we, if we have an ABE support for, uh, I mean, ABE for supporting a uniform model of computation, then that gives us the flexibility of uh, giving out a single key per functionality because the description doesn't change now based on the input length. So the question is now that what do we know so far about ABE for uniform models from standard assumptions? So uh, as we talk, uh, show, uh, sh uh, as we sh uh, sh uh, saw in the last talk, uh, the construction, the first construction probably by, uh, was given by Brent. Uh, it was for ABE for DFA with unbounded attribute lengths and unbounded number of keys from the Q type assumption. It's a parameterized assumption. Subsequently in 2017, uh, uh, Agrawal and Singh gave a construction uh, supporting, uh, I mean, for, for the same primitive uh, with unbounded attribute length support uh, from the LWE assumption. Uh, but restricted to the single key setting. So, and concurrently, just uh, now we saw the, the work by Gong et al. It constructs the same primitive from the standard k-linear assumption, static assumption, uh, with unbounded input length and unbounded number of keys. Uh, in this context, our work constructs uh, ABE for non-deterministic finite automata uh, with unbounded number of keys and uh, unbounded length attributes. Uh, from the learning with errors assumption. Our construction works in the symmetric key setting, but uh, I mean, uh, for all these years, uh, 
after t from 2012, uh, there was no progress on how to support non-deterministic finite automata, and it was explicitly left as an open problem by Brent uh, in 2012. So we constructed for the first time. Uh, and uh, we also additionally leverage our techniques to generalize it to predicate encryption, bounded key functional encryption, and reusable garbling for NFAs from LWE. Additionally, uh, we show a barrier in obtaining fully collusion resistant FE for DFAs uh, in, that, in, the, uh, in the sense that it implies it, uh, IO from standard assumptions. So it's, uh, it highlights a barrier in obtaining fully collusion resistant uh, DFA FE. So we also have a concurrent work uh, with Gong et al. Uh, and subsequent to our work also, I'm taking the techniques from our work, which uh, constructs the same primitive for DFA based on the same assumption. But uh, we have very different techniques. Uh, while Gong et al. achieves uh, key policy AB, we, our techniques are generic and uh, uh, run in a modular fashion, uh, which, which allows us to get both ciphertext and key policy AB. And uh, this will appear in TCC this year. Uh, so, uh, in context of the current uh, talk, uh, I want to highlight this fact that uh, our construction doesn't only support NFA, but it also supports this uh, generalized class of uniform circuits with bounded depth, actually. So, NFAs are a particular instantiation of this class, and uh, we can, I mean, NFAs are more practically relevant, actually. So, we will uh, restrict our attention to NFAs only for this talk. So let's look at the techniques to construct uh, this primitive. Let's look at how do we model this uh, secret key ABE for NFA. It's done in the same way, just that only uh, there will be only a master secret key which will be used for both key generation and encryption. The main differences are that the attribute length will be of an unbounded, uh, attribute will be an unbounded polynomial length. Uh, and the key generation takes the NFA description as an input. More importantly, the key generator doesn't know the input length now. And it has still to it has still uh, output a secret key which should work with arbitrary input lengths. Uh, security is modeled in the same way as before. So let's look at how do we construct it. We have a two-step solution to construct this primitive. The first step consists of constructing these yellow box, yellow and the red boxes, uh, where we have an ABE for NFA scheme with unbounded attribute length and with bounded size NFS. And the red box constructs uh, ABE for NFA with bounded attribute length and unbounded size NFS. And in step two, we have a way to combine them to get both unbound, unbounded in both these coordinates, as in unbounded attributes and unbounded NFA machines. So let's, uh, for ease of speech, I will refer to this yellow box as U comma B, the other one as B comma U, and the uh, green one as U, just U. So let's look at how to construct this U comma B primitive. So uh, since we are working in the symmetric setting, let's take the master secret key as a PRF key for now. Uh, so the naive idea to construct such a primitive will be to just take an NFA and convert it into a circuit and employ an ABE for circuits uh, scheme since we know how to construct them. But the thing is that uh, key generator doesn't know the input length and therefore it cannot just convert it into a circuit. So at this point we note that the attribute length uh, which, is has, which has unbounded polynomial length uh, is upper bounded by 2 power lambda la where lambda is the security parameter. Now, based on this, what we can do is that uh, we can have a circuit AB scheme and instantiate two power lambda many key pairs from the circuit AB scheme, where each such key pair will support inputs, I mean attributes of length i, ranging from one to two power lambda. And then uh, uh, we can encrypt a message under the proper public key uh, based on the length of the attribute. Uh, for the key generation, we will convert the NFAM to a set of two power lambda circuits, where each such circuit will be capable of handling input length i ranging from again one to two power lambda, and uh, use these ABE master secret keys to generate ABE keys for each of these circuits individually, and get them in a bunch to output as the secret key for the NFA machine M. Why does decryption work? Because decryptor knows the length of the attribute, at least. Uh, it, it can choose which particular secret key to use corresponding to the machine, uh, I mean circuit equivalent of the NFA and decrypt to get back M if M accepts X. Now the first problem here is that the key size is actually too long. It's exponential in security parameter. And to reduce this, we use a simple trick. We uh, handle inputs of length, attributes of length only two power I. 
Uh, so we instantiate the ABE scheme instead of two power lambda times, we instantiate it lambda plus one times where we handle attributes of length uh, two power i only, as in when, when and uh, uh, if and when the attribute comes during the encryption algorithm, the uh, we see the nearest power of two and pad it with sufficient number of bots and we encrypt the message under this new attribute. For key generation, we convert this machine name to a set of lambda circuits, lambda plus one circuits, which are individually capable of handling uh, inputs of length to power i and then use the ABE master secret keys again to generate keys for these circuits. So uh, while this works, now the next problem is that, I mean, we have reduced the number of keys to a polynomial count, but the next problem is that uh, each individual circuit ABE secret key can can have an arbitrary size. I mean, they can blow up by too much. Uh, we don't have a proper bound on the underlying circuit sizes, m hats of uh, equivalent NFS. I, I mean, the NFS equivalent circuits. So they may have arbitrary sizes. We need to bound them somehow. So to bound them, our first idea is to use the scheme by Bonnet et al. from 2014 Eurocrypt, which relies on LWE, which says that uh, it can ensure that the si size of the circuit AB secret keys grows only with the depth of these underlying circuits. Now, once we have only this depth dependency, we uh, need to have a bound on the depth of these underlying circuits. So a naive way to convert any NFAM to uh, any circuit will actually, I mean, it can be done like this, that you can track all the input uh, uh, states while reading every input symbol. And this can actually lead to a circuit of depth uh, polynomial in the length of the input. And that's what we don't want. So we actually employ a divide and conquer uh, strategy from the literature, complexity literature, to evaluate this uh, NFAM. And this ensures that the circuit that we have here, employing this divide and conquer uh, technique, the, the depth of the circuit scales as polylogarithmically in the machine size and the input size, which in turn ensures that the circuit AB secret key grows only as a polynomial in the security parameter. The third and the most crucial probably uh, the pr problem uh, in our naive way of constructing is that we had an inefficient key generation. Note that uh, our uh, uh, U, B key generation algorithm takes a machine name and converts it into a circuit, but this circuit may be too large for even the, for the key gen to even read it, actually. And ideally, uh, the time for key gen should not also depend on the input length now. So uh, the solution to get, to get around this, the solution is to somehow redistribute the computation in a way that uh, we delegate the inefficient part to the encryption and decryption algorithms of the U, B uh, primitive. Now, why encryption and decryption? Because these two are the only algorithms that can still run in time polynomial in the length of the attribute. So thankfully, functional encryption comes to our rescue here. Uh, so FE, as we already have seen uh, in the previous talks, it's a generalization of ABE and uh, where secret key corresponds to a circuit and uh, a ciphertext encodes the message. Uh, which, uh, I mean, uh, these uh, secret keys when used to decrypt the ciphertext reveals only the function of the plain text and nothing else. In our context, we only need a single key secure functional encryption, which can be again instantiated from the works of Goldwasser et al. and Agrawal, uh, and based on LWE. Can we still based on LWE? So uh, let's see how FE helps, yes, helps us here to delegate the computation of NFE to circuit transformation and ABE secret key generation. So the idea is that instead of converting to a circuit, the key generator now takes the input machine and uh, encodes it into an FE ciphertext. Parallelly, the encryption algorithm takes the attribute and uh, the message M and it converts, uh, I, I mean, uh, it generates an FE secret key for a circuit which embeds this input length, I mean, attribute length hardwired in it. Now, given these two are available to the decryptor, uh, it can run the FE decryption on the fly to get back C sub X of M by the functionality guarantee of FE, where C sub X of M is uh, described as follows. It takes the machine M as input. It computes, based on the hardwired input length of the attribute, it computes a suitable ABE key pair, uh, uh, which can handle inputs of length X, uh, mod X, and convert the NFAM to a circuit, actually, inside this circuit, uh, uh, to this circuit M hat, which has input length mod x, and then use the ABE master secret key to compute and output the ABE, master, ABE secret key for this circuit. 
Now, uh, once this is output by the FE decryption, the encryption algorithm also uh, actually encrypts uh, as a part of the ciphertext, it actually outputs the AB encryption of the uh, message M under the proper public key, under the same public key actually with which the, uh, for which the uh, same master secret key was used to compute uh, the uh, secret key for the NFA, circuit equivalent of NFA. And when these two are available to the decryptor, it can actually run the AB decryption algorithm to output the message if M accepted X. Now, while this template works, we still need to be a bit careful about the implementation of FE here. Uh, we don't need the ciphertext to scale up with the input size again. Otherwise, we fall in the same trap again. So for this, we use, a, we use the single key succinct FE scheme by Goldwasser et al., where it's ensured that FE ciphertext scales only with the depth input and output of the circuit and not with the size. And we carefully bound the depth input and output to be polynomials in security parameter. And uh, as a result, what we have here is that the U, B key generation and encryption algorithms runs in time proportional to the size of the machine and the size of the attribute. Uh, further, we have the decryptor generate the AB secret key on the fly, which is needed for the final decryption. And, but at the same time, because this FE secret keys uh, supports the circuit, and the circuit takes the NFA machine as input, the machine, we need a bound on the machine. That's why we have support for unbounded attributes, but with bounded size machines. So we need a bound on the machine, and this works. Uh, this is the high level idea of how we construct the U, B scheme. So uh, as a summary, let's look at the problems and their solutions that we faced from the nice solution. Uh, we had an exponentially long key for which we used attributes of length to power i. The uh, individual AB secret keys could be too large, uh, to handle this, we instantiated with a suitable ABE scheme and uh, ensured that the circuit depth is polynomial in security parameter. Thirdly, we had an inefficient key generation where we used uh, the succinct FE scheme to delegate this inefficiency, inefficiency to the encryption and decryption algorithms. So now let's look at how do you construct this B, U primitive. Note that this attribute length is now bounded. Since it is bounded, it's, it can be known to the setup algorithm and uh, therefore it is known to the key generator and the encryptor uh, and therefore we can actually employ a circuit AB scheme directly to convert NFAs into circuits and uh, instantiate it. Just we need to ensure that uh, because we are, uh, we, we want to handle unbounded size NFAs, we have, uh, we need uh, a depth guarantee on these uh, over NFAs of any arbitrary size. For that we can again use the same divide and conquer technique to uh, have a depth guarantee on these circuits. So once this is done, we now see how to construct this U primitive, unbounded length inputs and unbounded NFA machines. The high level idea is again to break up the computation in two parts where the size of the attribute is greater than the size of the machine and vice versa. We are working in the symmetric key setting, so therefore we will again have a master secret key as a PRF key, which can now inherently define a sequence of master secret keys from the underlying U, B scheme. Each such master secret key is capable of handling NFAs of size i ranging from 1 to 2 pole lambda. Uh, parallelly, this, uh, we can have a PRF key which uh, is able to define all these master secret keys from the B, U scheme, which are uh, capable of handling inputs of length 2 power uh, lambda, as in input attributes of length 2 power lambda. Now, how does the encryptor and key generator work? Let's look at them parallelly. Uh, because encryptor knows the length of the attribute, but, it, but not the size of the machine, and key generator knows the length of the machine, but not the attribute. Uh, what encryptor can do, it uh, samples master secret keys from this U, B scheme, mod of X uh, with uh, 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 NFAs of size supporting mod of X, I mean one to mod of X, and generate ciphertext under each of these uh, master secret keys. Accordingly, the decryptor can actually sample a secret key with the size of the machine M from the unbounded scheme. And uh, we can, once we know that uh, the size of the attribute X is greater than the size of the machine, we know that one of these ciphertexts actually corresponds to, uh, I mean, was generated with a master secret key capable of handling uh, NFAs of size M. And therefore, we can actually pair this key with the one of that, one of those ciphertexts. 
So what, what, what if the other thing happens as in the, the size of the machine uh, grows more than the size of the, is more than the size of the attribute, then we just roll the swap, uh, swap the role of the uh, two u comma b and b comma u schemes where the key generator now produces modern secret keys, modern secret keys each capable of handling i sized attributes uh, where i ranges from one to mod of m and encryptor gives a cipher text uh, uh, with the b comma u scheme which is capable of handling only mod x sized attributes. So once this is done, uh, the decryption compares what, uh, I mean, compares the length of this machine and the length of the attribute. If the uh, attribute size is greater, then it uses the unbounded scheme to uh, combine it, unbounded attribute scheme. Otherwise, it uses the unbounded machine scheme to combine these ciphertext and attributes, uh, these uh, ciphertext and secret keys and run the decryption. So in summary, we, uh, we run these two underlying schemes, u comma b and b comma u in parallel to make the decryption work and to, which supports both unbounded x, unbounded attributes and unbounded m. Uh, now, using the same techniques, we can generalize it to get predicate encryption, bounded key functional encryption, and uh, reusable garbling for NFS from learning with errors assumption. And last but not the least, uh, let's see how to get IO from uh, the uh, secret key DFAFE. The high level idea is to again uh, look at this way, look at it this way. We, if we have an NC1 circuit, we can actually use Barrington's theorem to convert it into a branching program and then leverage the similarities between a branching program and a DFA uh, uh, while the input length is fixed to convert it into a DFA actually. And once we have this tool with us, if we have a secret key FE for DFA, uh, we can employ this tool with this thing to obtain secret key FE for NC1 circuits. And this, as recent results have shown, this is good enough to imply indistinguishability obfuscation, which actually highlights a barrier in obtaining fully collusion resistant uh, functional encryption for uh, DFS. So let me conclude by uh, saying that we have the first constructions of ABE and its generalizations of NFA from LWV. We also illuminate a barrier and our techniques are new. We hope that they may find more applications in similar and different contexts. Uh, we also want to see how to support Turing machine and RAM. Uh, and last but not the least, again, our uh, primitive is restricted to the secret key setting. We want a generalization to the public key one. So thanks for your attention. If you have a question, please come to the microphone. Yeah, let's thank this all speakers again. Yep. Thank you.